I honestly don't know how I've never thought to talk about this, but we need to talk about in what order you read these volumes. Well, hey, and welcome back to The Commonplace. My name is Autumn Kern, and I am here with what I think will actually be a very quick video to talk about in what order should I read Charlotte Mason's volumes? Because there are six of them, and it would be easy to think because they are numbered that I should just start at one and read straight through. But the sneaky thing about these books is they were not written one through six. Some of them are collections of parents review articles, some are collections of lectures. They're all really different. And usually a question a mom will ask is which one of these do I need to read first? Because while they're not exactly long books, they're also not very short books and they are in Victorian English and there's a little bit of a learning curve. Charlotte Mason really loved to run on sentence and there are references she does not footnote <laughs> and you're trying to keep up with them. And so it can be kind of difficult when you just jump in and you feel like I just have to go straight through before I'm even able to educate my child. I don't know if I can do this and so I'm here to tell you exactly which book you should start with because I do think the one you start with is the same for everyone, but then it's really going to depend on your child, your life, you, what you're learning about, what your most immediate needs are. And I'm gonna give you a quick little bit for each book so that you know which one to choose, okay? So starting with the first one I think you should read, which is not book number one. I don't know if I've ever told you to read book number one in anything. It's actually book number six. This is a philosophy of education or towards a philosophy of education, depending on the print that you get. Um, this is the final. This is like the, the M.O. of Mason. It is all of it laid out, the 20 principles laid out. And I heard a story that made me laugh, actually. I interviewed Karen Glass last year, and she is just a queen in the Mason world, right? We learned so much from her. It was wonderful. I'll link it so you can follow along with that. It was kind of the capstone end to my whole podcast season about Mason's 20 principles. Um, if you are very new to Mason, it is an introductory uh, swim. I wouldn't call it a dive. We could have always gone deeper, but a swim into Mason's 20 principles. And if you are hanging here, all you need to know about me is that I think the philosophy is the most important thing for a mother to get in place as she starts homeschooling. So this one though, I was talking to Karen Glass and she had this email chain, she said back in the day where they were discussing Mason's 18 principles as they read through the volumes, just read straight through. And when they got to this one, they were like, oh, there are 20. Ding, ding, ding. So I think you should start here. It's the final collection. It's the most polished. Things change a little bit for Mason throughout these volumes because things were changing in the world. You know, she talks a lot about habits in the first book, but then the Great War happened, World War One happened, and she kind of softened on habits and changed a little bit of her approach to them. Still, they are the tool of discipline, but the instrument of discipline, but things kind of shifted, but they shifted to here and this is where you should start so that you're not kind of lost in those first couple of volumes thinking, oh, this is the way, and then you find out it changed by, you know, a different volume. So I say this is the one for everyone. It's the 20 principles. She works through them. She gives practical. She's explaining the philosophy. She builds out a whole vision. You see how interconnected they are. You cannot highlight or focus on one principle and leave the others behind. You must use them as actually Karen Glass's book in harmony. Like that's a phrase for Mason in vital harmony. And so they must be used in a harmonious way. And this is the one to start with. I don't care if your baby is Two, I don't care if your baby is 14. This is the book to start with, okay? Hands down, that's my answer for everyone. I see a lot of like, oh, start with home education if your kid's under nine. No, start here, start here. Now, then it does become a matter of what's your kid like? What? How old are they? What's going on in your family life? Where are you in your school education? How much do you already know about Mason? Are you kind of a veteran and you're brushing up or are you brand new and you don't know anything? So I'm now just going to actually tell you a bit about each book. So starting with home education because my audience is primarily moms with kids nine and under. Um, home education is this book. It is written for kids nine and under. And so it covers things like making sure you remove the woolen things off your baby so they can nap under the tree while the older children play out of doors, which I was never able to get my children to do that. But then all the way to things like the first reading lesson. And I have taught a child how to read. So, you know, it's just gonna be a whole span of things. I actually now gift this as a baby shower gift. And I make a note. This is not me trying to make you a homeschooler, but this book talks about all of life of a child, a young child. Um, there can be a real banner in the Charlotte Mason world about how we don't start formal lessons until six and you need this quiet growing time and all these things that get thrown out primarily in the Instagram Charlotte Mason world, which is a different sort of world, I think. Um, and that's actually not what Mason is talking about. So she thinks the early years of a child's life should be incredibly rich and full and formative because you don't just start thinking about God's world at six. You don't just start observing things at six. You start doing these things as a way 
way of life. And if you can start while that baby is in diapers, you will set yourself up with habits and norms and just the, the direction of goodness and truth and beauty in your home from the very beginning. And so if you have nine and under and you are at all curious about how do I order my home? What sort of habits should I be focusing on? How do I start um, really amusing, as Mason would say, which means it brings delight. So amusing early lessons for math or for reading, it's gonna be in here. She actually talks about it. She talks about kids before six doing phonetic sounds in the dirt. Did you know? So home education, great one for that crowd. Okay, so then the next one that comes in the order is parents and children. And my recommendation for this one is that you actually do this with another person or a group of women. We did this for our winter book club last year and it's, it was great because this is a collection of parents review articles. So it's not exactly the most cohesive read. It doesn't just flow because you kind of jump between large subjects or large ideas, dive into them, come back out and go to something else. A fun thing about this book, when I read it for the first time, I noticed that Mason does have a footnote. They're very rare in Mason. She assumes you know what she is referring to. And uh, there's a footnote that the phrase atmosphere, discipline and life was from somewhere else but she doesn't remember from whom she got it. So she's like, I can't remember, but it's not mine. Um, and yet now that's like the Mason phrase. Everyone thinks of Mason or if, if they know Mason, but anyone who's in the Mason world knows atmosphere, discipline, life, education is, that's her thing. And yet it wasn't her thing originally, which is very classical of Mason if we're being honest. But anyways, this is a great one to do with a book club because you're going to cover a myriad of subjects and they're the type that are really good for discussion. So again, I don't want to just poke at Instagram, Charlotte Mason world, but it can be very idyllic. It can look very beautiful. Everything's perfect. It's so easy to control a flat lay photo or a photo of your children in a field. It's not so easy to apply these principles when you are in your house with like a stinky attitude from a four year old and a six year old who all of a sudden just says no to everything. Right. But that is the reality of being in fellowship and living with, persons with children. And so within a book club setting or within a group discussion, you're able to take the actual principles that bring life because the principles bring life. I think perfect squares can bring burdens, but principles bring life. And so engaging with these ideas, you're able to talk about what does it look like when you have a home that's struggling with loss or lack or pain or grief? What does it look like when your child maybe has dyslexia or some sort of neurodiversity and you're trying to apply these things? Um, how do you talk about your neighbors, the kids who go to school, the kids who are schooled differently. This is all actually in here. Um, how do we give them a love for a king? How do we teach them what's good? What does it look like to talk to a child about God? How do you take them seriously? Yet how do you direct them in the right ways? What are the habits of that? Um, this was great for discussion. So I highly recommend that Parents and Children is read with others. If you're looking for a book club, there's your book. Okay, then there's school education. So we had the zero to nine crowd in home education. Now we have the nine and up. Um, if your kids then are just older, um, which I definitely know we have some commonplace and some common mom, common house, I like common. Uh, we have a lot of moms who do have a kiddo or two that are already up in this age category. This is the book you're gonna want for lessons exams, ordering the school day. It's very much, this is how we do school education. And that's just like the easiest one to summarize. Um, I'm not, I've also not spent as much time in this book. The other ones, yes, this one, I just know I'll need in a bit. And so I don't wanna pretend I know things I don't. So that's as much as I know for you. Okay, Ourselves. So this is book four, but Ourselves was written by Mason to students. And so there are two volumes in here or two books, book one and book two. And now I'm forgetting, I think book one is meant for children 12 at least 12 and then up. And then uh, book two is for high schoolers, so your upper forms. And I, um, I've i scanned this one because it's really good. This one has uh, a lot of stuff about the kingdom of man's soul. It's about learning to discipline oneself morally, intellectually, physically. It's a lot about what is the good life? What do we take in that, that harms our soul? What benefits our soul? How do we learn to choose? How do we engage the will? What do we do with our reason? Um, a really great book for that um, young, young adult that, you know, 12 into the upper teens age. I am waiting really to read it with my kids. I got that from Brandy Vensel. I remember just coming across one of her afterthoughts articles and she said she had saved ourselves to read with her oldest student. And then she just reads it with each of her children. And I loved that idea. And I really do love engaging with ideas the first time with my kids. Like I do the same thing with composer and artist too. And so I am saving this one to read fully with them. I've just used it in some of my work, knowing that those pictures were in there. So this one is for your students once they are a particular age. So you can kind of just put this one aside if you have little guys, but not on the floor like I just did. 
<laughs> okay, and then the last one is The Formation of Character. This is book five, I believe, in the, yeah, in the series. And this is a very fun book of case studies and habit training. It is just like a manual for if you think, oh, I need a new idea. This, this habit keeps happening. I've tried to find the activating cue. I've tried to change it. I've tried to redirect through ideas and atmosphere and the habit. I've tried to do like a peer group as a sibling group. And if you're like, wow, there's a lot of habit ideas you're throwing out. I actually did a full course in Common House on Habits 101. Uh, we covered all the Mason habits and then habit training. It was, it's been a lot of fun. But um, when you are stuck with habits, formation of character is the one to grab. Uh, I have the way of the will guide, which I've talked about in videos before, but it's basically what what you need when you need to do an about turn in your house. Like everything's gone off course. Maybe you moved. Maybe it's just that doldrums of winter in the middle of the school year. Maybe you're pregnant and sick and you have just let the house slide in every possible way. You can always get back on the path towards truth, goodness, and beauty. That's the good news there. You can always do an about turn. And uh, I use case studies in that of like these different types of children, which are totally made up regardless of their similarities to any children I might know. Uh, but I got that idea from Formation of Character. She has case studies in here. And it's just like, I call it the manual for habit. So I will just go through, read a couple stories, get a little inspiring idea for myself, get a little of encouragement sometimes. It can be, it can be discouraging, you know, when you're working on a habit for a long time, because yes, some habits take years to cement. It is not a fully formed habit until the child can do it on their own and they do it consistently. So sometimes you're working for a while, but that is normal. That is normal with uh, all people. I bet you are still learning some habits just like your children. So uh, be encouraged for you, be encouraged for your kids with this one. This is the habit book to go to if you are in desperate need for habits. And that is it. Those are the Mason volumes. That is how you should approach them. And I was going to give you a note that if you have a volume, you don't need to go buy all six. Love that volume. Read it many times, particularly if it's volume six or volume one, if you're in that you know zero to nine group, um, read it many times. In that interview with Karen, she actually mentioned reading one volume two to three times before you move on to another volume so you really know it. And I think that's excellent advice. I've tried to take that from her since she said that, just kind of stick with a volume and really dig in rather than feeling I should jump around so I can read them all and then I know it which is just a very bad way to approach reading generally. So don't do that. But uh, it's really good to do that. And she got that idea from, I can't remember now if it was in a parents review article, but it was from a school administrator type who would go around to the different schools in the PNEU and assess what was happening. And he made a note that in the schools, teachers would have maybe one or two volumes, but they were reading them basically on a loop. And that was their primary resource for teaching. So we now have the benefit of having all six very easily. You can hop on Amazon or them all at once if you want to, but you don't need to have all of them all of the time to do this well. And so hopefully that's encouraging if you're coming in and you're like, I have thousands of pages to read. Find the book that most meets what you need after volume one, which is the one you need, and then uh, enjoy learning and reading it again. And as your kids age, you'll read it again and uh, more will click. And that is the joy of learning. So if you have any questions, let me know below. Otherwise, enjoy your Charlotte Mason volumes and I will see you guys soon.